Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday devotional. And we welcome all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Just a couple of announcements that we need to be uplifting to you this uh, this afternoon is that this coming Sunday at 9:15 we'll have our services inside the church. We have our drive-in service, and we also will be live streaming to all of you at home. And you can tap into any anywhere uh, in in any of those venues venues that you'd like to participate in worshiping. And I have to say again that. Coming inside the church is very, very safe. It's, I've said this over and over again, it's probably safer than going to Walmart. That there's, there's not a lot of people coming to worship inside the church. Uh, maybe 20, 20 some people and everyone's socially distancing, they're wearing masks. So it's, it's a good opportunity to feel safe if you'd like to come to worship inside. And if you don't, there's always the opportunity for the drive-in services and also at home you can live stream it or watch it later on in the day but uh, the choices are yours and also I'd, I, would, I would again encourage don't forget the offerings that we have an offering bin outside we have an offering bin inside a plate or a, a, a box that you can deposit your offering in or you can mail them in as well so those are some choices that would like to uh, offer to you and uh, and again we've been blessed at faith with, with a lot of things that are happening. Our pavilion is coming to the end and we've been blessed, so blessed with your generosity and kindness. And as we start wrapping things up with that, and we'll let you know when we're close to that, but we are coming and we are getting close, but we, uh, we'll let you know when we come to that, that point uh, that we can celebrate that the loan has been paid in full, but we're not there yet, but we're coming and we're getting close. So, but we welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ and I continue to pray for you. I, I've been hearing a lot of, of, of people having issues and concerns and fears and anxieties about a lot, of, a lot of things that are happening in our culture and a lot with the, uh, the COVID-19 virus, especially with school coming next month, there's anxiety that uh, some schools are doing hybrid kind of schools that they're offering um, some online uh, classes, I guess. Uh, and then uh, part of the day or part of the week will be online. The other part will be at, at the school. I think a lot of schools are looking in that direction and colleges and universities as well. So there's that uncertainty. And I know parents is anxiety about sending your kids to school. But, you know, again, I, I truly believe if you have a mask and if they're doing things like that, your, your, your children will be safe. You have to yeah. You have to believe that, and and you also have to protect your kids as well. So, and 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 and, and the school, uh, the superintendent, and and the principals, and the nurses, and everyone, they're going to be watching your children uh, and and making sure that they're cared for. And as well, I I'm, I'm hearing about um, people who are having financial issues that their their places of businesses are cutting back, and so your incomes are are hurting. So I'm hearing a lot, and, and again, with all the racial tension that's in our country, and I know a lot of people are upset, and there's a lot of concern, and we're trying to do our best to, to try to resolve these issues as, as the church, as with the government, and individually. So we have a lot going on on our plate. And, and I, I was thinking about that, I was thinking about all these things, and I wanna read to you a passage that uh, that means a lot to me that when I'm in troubled times that I go to it and I, I draw strength from it and this is from Exodus chapter 17 Exodus chapter 17 and I'm going to start reading verses 8 through 16 8 through 16 chapter 17 8 through 16 and this is Amalek attacks Israel and is defeated listen to the Word of God from the book of Exodus then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, that was, that was his right-hand man, Choose some men for us and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with a staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek, while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And you can always visualize this. The war is happening. Moses is up on the hill. He has a staff in his hand. And, and uh, 
her and Joshua are with him. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on the one side and the other on the other side, so his hands would, were steady until the sun set. And Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the sword. Then verse 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a reminder in the book and recite it in the hearing of Joshua. I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He, he said, A hand upon the hammer of the Lord. The Lord will give war with Amalek from generation to generation. I was thinking about how many of us are just so tired and weary going through this pandemic and then plus all these protests and uh, this, this hatred toward the United States of America that some people have. I was thinking about many of us are growing weary. And so what can we do to strengthen us? My advice to all of you is make sure that you have good people around you, good solid people who can encourage you, uplift you, and hold up your hands when you are weak. Again, if you need to talk to me, call me at home, call me at the office, send me a, an email, and I will get back to you, and I can call you, and I can pray with you. And we can ask God to hold up both of our hands, because some days I am weak too. I know with the issues that we're having with Cindy, that some days are, are a struggle for Sarah and myself, that, that we, we're tired, and, and, and I know Cindy is, and we're trying to do the best we can for her. And then plus all this other stuff that surround us. So make sure you have people around you. And again, I'm going to, I can't emphasize this enough. Pray, 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 pray. Pray for your life depends on it. Your family's life depends on it. Your children, your, your parents, your spouse, your, your moms and dad, all the brothers and sisters, all their lives depends on your prayers. And God is waiting for you to pray. So pray. And will you join me right now in praying? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and we thank you for another week of living life. With all the turmoil that's in our country and around the world with the pandemic and racism and this hatred toward the United States of America, we pray that nothing is ever perfect, Father, but we pray that all these issues can be resolved. And again, it can be if you put God first and love your neighbor as yourself. If we follow those two commands of Jesus, everything will be put into place in a proper perspective. Give us strength and hold up our hands, dear Lord. And I know Jesus is holding up my hands and blessing me as I continue to bless you. Bless and hold up our hands, dear God, and give us the strength that we need. Will you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless all of you.